In today's video, we're going to be going over the upcoming pattern. We do have an upcoming multi-day potential tornado outbreak that we need to discuss starting Monday and lasting all the way through potentially Wednesday or longer, perhaps. So we need to really, really watch this one closely. Of course, we'll be breaking down the model guidance, going into the Storm Prediction Center. And really, that doesn't just go for that event. It goes for everything over the next 10 days, as you guys know. So let's just dive into things and take a look at the day for tomorrow particularly for sunday on the 5th is where we want to start out here and we do see that there is thunderstorm activity starting for the deep south central states and really going all the way through the uh, southeast up into the mid-atlantic and the northeast here for the day tomorrow on sunday a more wintry looking storm here for the west oregon idaho Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, California, all of these states have a chance to see some snowfall, especially in those higher elevation areas. Very, very interesting. As we move forward towards Monday, this is going to be day one of our primary uh, severe weather threat. And, you know, every, every threat is to be taken seriously, but definitely uh, something that we're watching is this strong, strong low pressure center over South Dakota. And I think the most concerning thing about this system isn't even just the dynamics here, which are very intense, by the way, rushing cold and dry air here from the west, and then a surge of this warmth and humidity uh, from the south. And this really creates a swirl. This dynamic does not look good. Definitely very tornadic. But that isn't the most concerning thing. The most concerning thing is that we expect this to primarily occur overnight. Yes, unfortunately, this threat does look to pick up overnight and really, really bring potential uh, for tornadic activity while everybody's asleep, which is super unfortunate and super scary to think about, of course. So um, there's multiple ways to go about this. The one thing is you definitely want to pay attention to any watches, warnings, and advisories. They have weather radios for that reason. I think most iPhones do put out warnings if there is a tornado warning uh, that have alarms, but definitely make sure you have a way to hear those warnings if they occur while you're sleeping. I think that's hugely important and during especially events like this. Uh, before we break down the overnight threat, because this is the afternoon of Monday on May 6th, I want to mention that we do have, again, this wintry weather occurring here for a lot of the Cascades and the Rockies, as well as mountainous areas of western Canada. We also, in addition to those thunderstorms associated with our major low up here in the Dakotas, we also have thunderstorm activity throughout the deeper south and up the east coast again on Monday. Now let's move overnight. Starting out at about 11 p.m. here, this is when we really get fired up with some thunderstorms across a lot of your plains like the North and South Dakota area, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, uh, Missouri here, Oklahoma, down through Texas. We even have a secondary low forming here over North Central Texas. And look at our primary low. 978 it's rapidly dropping in pressure which is really really bad news of course as we take it towards about 1 or 2 a.m here we see these thunderstorms are still really really firing up for these similar states move just a little bit further eastward of course and as we take a look at perhaps 3 or 4 a.m here we still see very major thunderstorms occurring for oklahoma kansas missouri iowa illinois now wisconsin as well and still Minnesota there, as we have now a 976 millibar low pressure center over North Dakota. Very intense, and as we move towards about, I would say 6 a.m. here, we still see thunderstorms prevailing for the Midwest now, and some of the Central Plains still. So this is just going to go all the way through the night, and it's not going to slow down at any point, which is, you know, very dangerous, of course. Once we're reaching kind of the noon time, we see that this is primarily over the upper Midwest. And by the afternoon of Tuesday, we see that we still have this looming threat of thunderstorms now for the upper Midwest uh, portions of the Ohio Valley as well, and even into the deep south. We even have thunderstorms underneath this primary area where we still have isolated and scattered about thunderstorms up and down this Gulf Coast and Southeast Coast. We have snowfall prevailing still for the Northwest again, down through the Rockies. Let's take it towards Wednesday, where we expect another day of potential severe weather, but especially in this corridor here, uh, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, even into the Carolinas, I would say are some primary areas to watch as of now. Even though our northern low has dissipated, as you can see, we do have a 997 here in between Oklahoma and Kansas, and that should take over as that primary low. Uh, by the time we reach Thursday... That low kind of moves 
up towards the Great Lakes, and we see it over southern Michigan here is in 996, and we see underneath of it a lot of thunderstorm activity once again for the Gulf states and up the East Coast, so another day perhaps of some severe weather for Thursday on the 9th. By the time we reach the 10th, keep in mind this is the day that we expect our big cooldown to occur, we see a surging warm pattern out west occurring, and this is indicative of a positive PNA. That is going to be something to really, really watch for. We have a strong high pressure system here over Wyoming, and of course, this is going to just help to really pull these winds up on the western end of that high. So, all things are pointing towards surging warmth out west. And equally to the eastern end of that high, we expect sinking cold air here moving from the north to the south. And sure enough, that's what we get. So this is kind of the perfect storm for a springtime cool down here, especially across the central states, but even the eastern states. And on Friday, we still see a lot of potential thunderstorms in the central and eastern states. Saturday here on the 11th, same story. This cool down is really, really taking hold of the Midwest and Great Lakes as well as the northeast. But we still see thunderstorm activity throughout these areas and surging warmth out west. For Sunday on the 12th here, we get actually a late season nor'easter, perhaps 997, bringing some heavy precipitation to the east coast. Also some winds. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a 1-2 to two inch rain event or more uh, if we get this strong of a low offshore. And also some strong winds could not be ruled out. So very interesting to see that occurring. Uh, Monday on the 13th, we see a little bit quieter of conditions. We see some thunderstorms though for Oklahoma and Texas here and perhaps here for some of the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley into the Northeast, although those could just be showers by this point. And then by Tuesday, this is the end of the model run on the 14th, we see some thunderstorms firing up in the boundary between this cooler air and the warmer and more humid air that's trying to push up from the South. This could lead towards some severe weather threats, but it is in the long range, so we need to watch it closely and track it moving forward. Let's take a look here at the total precipitation, and a whole lot is expected from the central plains eastward. So we see as we take this from the northern plains to the northeast and the southern plains to the southeast, we see above average activity for all of these areas. And then for the northwest here, for coastal regions of Washington, Oregon, and northern California, as well as areas throughout Wyoming, and Montana, we are seeing a couple areas in there seeing above average activity as well. Let's take a look at that snowfall. And with some of that above average activity being out west, we do see above average snowfall, I would say, for this time of year. One to two feet expected for a lot of regions throughout our three major mountainous ranges, like the Cascades, Sierra Nevada, and throughout the Rockies. Let's take a look here at the temperature pattern. We do see overall a warmer pattern in the east. And look at this. This is a perfect frame to look at. This is May 8th. We have colder temperatures out west, indicative of a negative PNA, which encourages warmth here in the central and eastern states. Whatever we see here out west, expect the opposite for the central and eastern states. That's a pretty good rule of thumb and would basically be right nine times out of ten, I would say. And it's right definitely on this frame. And we're going to watch by the 10th what happens. And it's the opposite. Uh, surprise, surprise. Warmth prevails out west. And look at this. The opposite of that occurs for the central and eastern states. Like I just said, this is called a positive PNA. And I wish that I could tell you we go right back to a warm pattern, but we really don't. I mean, we see cold air masses moving in. I'd say the only thing is it looks like the east coast could warm up considerably quicker than the central and some of the rocky states, actually. This trough looks to be centered maybe even more on the western half of the nation than the eastern half. Yeah, right about here um, for some of the central states in through the Rockies and a bigger, warmer air mass out for the west coast and the east coast here. We do see this type of a pattern set up uh, every once in a while, so I wouldn't be surprised if this actually ends up happening that way. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the Storm Prediction Center for the day one outlook here. This is going to be for the rest of today on Saturday, May 4th through 6 a.m. tomorrow on Sunday, May 5th. We have two general thunderstorm risk areas here in the lighter greens where we expect general thunderstorms. The darker green area is where we expect some isolated severe weather to occur. That's called our marginal risk area. The yellow areas here for Illinois and then for Texas and New Mexico are your slight risk areas where we expect scattered severe weather. And then the orange area here is called your enhanced risk. And that is where we expect a little bit of some widespread severe weather to occur in there. Day two, which will be for Sunday, May 5th, we have that general thunderstorm risk area from a lot of the northern Rockies down through the plains, across the deep south and up the east coast. 
Again, expect general thunderstorms in there. And then your two marginal risk areas here where we expect isolated severe weather. Day three, which will be for Monday, May 6th, this is that overnight severe weather outbreak that is potentially going to be occurring Monday night into Tuesday morning. Uh, again, very large general thunderstorm risk area, a large marginal risk area here across a lot of the Midwest and Plains. And then your yellow area here is your slight risk area where again, we expect scattered about severe weather. And then the orange areas where we expect widespread severe weather throughout Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma. I expect a potential tornado outbreak for Monday night. Keep that in mind. We will track it over the coming days, of course. It's only at day three right now, so we could see some upgrades between now and then. The following days, like Tuesday on May 7th, we do have a long range, 15% chance outlook here uh, for a lot of these areas throughout the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and back through the plains again. So the day after that Monday night event, this is for the day on Tuesday into Wednesday, we are seeing quite a bit of some potential severe weather on this day as well. This roughly translates this yellow area to a slight risk, but oftentimes we see it end up being more than that over time. And then we also have a day five outlook here for Wednesday, May 8th, the day after that one, where everything kind of slides southward. And we have, again, uh, a 15% chance area here that roughly translates to a slight risk, but again, probably would end up being more, unfortunately. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. We do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.